All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Ramona, who is up the up the up the state a little bit in Northern California and San Jose, where it's probably equally probably hotter up there actually right now, right? Actually, pretty nice. It's 80. Ah, okay. 105, 110 we can have. Yeah, I was there actually. I was in the Bay Area a week or so ago, and it was uh, it was knocking a hundred degrees in the East Bay. <laughs> so, yeah. So Steve is the host of the Pantheon Alliance Mastermind and has a current membership of forty five millionaires and billionaires, and founder of the number one ranked small business marketing podcast with thousands of followers. A super connector to connect with people to build partnerships and joint ventures. And that's what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the concept of your network being your net worth. And so, Steve, it's one of those things when I think about network and networking and all of it, it's something that everybody thinks they do. And, uh, you know, we all know how important it is. But when it comes down to it, we tend to have these networks, say, like LinkedIn or whatever, which lots of connections and people but they're not active. They're not really networks. They're not really people we can reach out to. Um, they're just kind of people we've connected with, gathered. It's like gathering cards at a trade show and back in the old days and considering that a network. Yeah, we're old enough to know that. Yeah, here's the thing to keep in mind. We're in the people asset business. Yeah, you need HR, you need sales, you need marketing, you need a team. All that that comes with a business, but the bottom line, bottom line, bottom line, with all that, you need people. Mm-hmm. Me and you, John, start a CRM business. You have a great one already, but say we start a tech business. Well, eventually we need people, we need employees, we need customers, we need collaborate, all that. What do you do to make people an asset? You build a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and that, and that is uh, exactly. But then when we get into business, then we tend to start to forget about that aspect you know and and i think let's talk a little bit about so everybody's favorite is linkedin right and they think that's a it's a great place to build a network and it is it is in its own way but it's but it's not if you just use it as a kind of passive collector of connections i'm going to be very colorful today yes in the sense that yeah somebody tells you they have 100,000 people on linkedin or they got 30 i got 5,000 that's not the big deal. Now, if you're Tony Robbins, Damon John, a Shark Tank, that's a big deal because people, when you say something, there's mm -hmm. activity. When I say something or somebody with 50,000, is 50,000 people responding? No, there's probably one, two, or three. Yeah. So your important thing with uh, LinkedIn, which is a great example, right, on there every day, is your inner circle, the people that you're partnering up with. Maybe they're your clients. Maybe they're you're referring them to somebody, but they're in that inner circle where you trust. I always say that you can make a phone call and they're going to answer the phone. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. And you start off with that, uh, with focusing on that, and and then nurturing. But I mean, the end of the day, like networks are uh, networks grow with reciprocity, right? Where where I know that Steve's in my network now. I know that if I need something from Steve, I can reach out because Steve knows if he needs something, he can reach out. Or I've already done something or you know help Steve in some way. Therefore, if I reach out, uh, he's going to feel. That oh yeah yeah you know John's a valuable and he's done this for me I'll do this for him so I think people have lost that idea of res, you know reciprocity if you like uh, it, when it comes to networking it tends to be I see people a lot of it it seems to go one way you said two good words reciprocity never could say it but you know what I mean invaluable if you're a thinking grow rich fan out there Napoleon Hill's book if you, know, if you want to read a great book it's an awesome book it's really a viable and a real quick side note, Can You Think and Go Rich is a friend of mine, unfortunately, passed away six weeks ago, but he actually took the book to be a multi-billionaire. But back to the law of reciprocity, chapter four is where I started, law of increase. So I bring increase to you, John. What are you going to go? You, what are you going to ask? How can I support you? Where, you're going to give me reciprocity. People are just not going to go and give you five referrals because you're handsome. You're beautiful. You got a great voice. Maybe some people and maybe an influencer, but not us, people that are in the grind trying to help and bring value to people. So when I meet people, again, I go back to the people asset business, 
what kind of value can I bring? I did this morning with a guy. He says, I don't know why we jumped on the call, but I'd like to get to know you by the time we we're done. He became my best friend. I gave him some resources, a referral. He goes, man, I want to work with you. Why did he say that? Because I brought value to him. I cared about him. I showed that. Here's another tip, audience. Give away all your IP for free. Just give it away. It mm -hmm. will come back. People aren't going to be able to fall through on your IP. They're going to want you because it's yours. Mm -hmm. You want to go to the source. Like, let's use your, you know, your CRM. They're going to go to you. Yeah, I'm going to try to do it, but they're going to come back to you to support, help. There's always going to be something there. I yeah. think that's the lifeblood of an entrepreneur is those free workshops. I'm actually doing one today. I do every other Monday for business. And I do once a month for podcasting. It's changed my life. People are coming to my life that I never thought would. So give that stuff away. The universe loves it, and the universe will make changes. Yeah, and what I like by what, what you outlined there is that that idea of of bringing value first, and and I think that's the key to it is that is that just because we have these uh, tools of mass communication, mass connecting, mass outreach, and all of that. It doesn't mean that that's that that's effective for us personally. It's the targeted outreach. It's the building, as you say, you're building relationships with your inner circle. It's actually investing the time and energy because I feel like we live in this shortcut culture where people seem to think there's a shortcut. Oh, I've got all these connections on LinkedIn. If I just blast out to them, something should come back to me on the law of averages, right? If I blast a thousand, then hopefully if two reply, then hey, I'm great. Instead of instead of going the other route, which requires some investment of time and effort and some authenticity more than anything. Yeah, transactions are short road. I mean, I sell you today, John. You might I've mean, not built a relationship, but you're gonna jump on my product or service. You might stay with me for a few months. But if I sell you in a month, but I built a relationship, multiple meetings, maybe an exchange of an email, and you're going, I really like want to work with Steve. Now you're with me two or three years. So mm -hmm. audience, you have 10 people that buy you on the short road or five people that buy you on the long road, but last year's not months. Which one are you making more money with? Which is eventually the bottom line. Or give you the KPI, ROI, whatever those letters mm -hmm. that are put to business. I think it's going to grow on the long-term road. But we deal with FOMO, fear, COVID, recession. I mean, you can name it. It's been going on for 100 years. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So what, what other ways can you stand out to potential people in your in your network and differentiate today? Because I feel like, again, because of this so much kind of, I would say, I don't call it bad behavior, but still I say less than optimal behavior out there of people blasting that, you know, people's... Uh, kind of guards are up a little more so it can be you know people are a little more reticent than they may once upon a time being so what are some other ways you can break through the noise and 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 uh, you know develop a relationship with somebody virtually collaborator not competitor hmm. nobody's there. i mean let's use the crm i know so that it's, it's a little more complex than maybe a free one but if somebody goes you know i can't afford this right now then you know, you go, John. Hey, here's a free, you know, whatever you do. Let's mm -hmm. say here's a free one. Start out when you're ready to join us. Join us. Yeah. Holy mackerel! How many people hear that? Instead of no, you need this, you need this, you need this. If you don't, you're going to fail. Yep. What's going to happen when they start taking off? They're going to buy your CRM because yep. they remember John gave me that. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. You know, if somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm. I'm a realtor, I work on my own, or I have an assistant with me. I'm, I'm thinking of like, you know, you've got a CRM. I'd say it's not going to be the right one for you. It's going to be overkill. It's ours is for teens and bigger. Here's other ones you might want to consider. But yeah, I mean, I would have, and and you're right. And if, if, you're, if you're honest and you're authentic like that, then you're going to, it'll come back on you. Yeah, I'd rather work with you than somebody else. I'd rather refer you. See, that's the other side of this. Yeah is the referrals. When you treat me good, I've got thousands of people on my network, and good so long, but we build this relationship where we're not selling. Well, I'm gonna open my network to you. What's that gonna look like? We never know. But yeah. a bigger network or somebody opening their network, probabilities and opportunity are gonna grow much faster. Yeah, and I love that you brought up referrals because that's another area I think that uh, that is so uh, that there's still so many issues with. Because again, it's almost like networking. It's like if you say, 
you say to a lot of salespeople that like, you know, have you asked for referrals or what's your referral strategy? They'll say, oh yeah, well, I, I always send a, a request to new customers or customers. Oh, you got any referrals? Now, you know, as well as I do, if I got one today, like out of the blue from somebody, I'd be like, mm, no, I can't really think of anyone. Sorry, move on because you've just given me a job to do, but you've also haven't done anything with me lately. You know, this is, you know, I may have bought something off you, but uh, since buying something off you, we haven't really developed a relationship. So, uh, or you haven't even explained to me what a referral looks like or, you know, how, and so therefore, again, it's, it's just like throwing spaghetti against the wall, isn't it? It, it really is. And a perfect example is Friday, I got a referral from a gentleman. I haven't talked to him in six weeks, but he ran the summary. It would be a great connection. I could help them. Maybe a guest on my podcast. You know what's funny? He asked me, how can I support you? And I said, I've got this project. You know, some people, you know what? I think I get some projects on people to connect you with. Again, build, I'm going to go back to that building that relationship, not selling. Mm -hmm. Asking is just, John, do you know a professional athlete that's retired that has a business? You go, I don't. Okay, we move on. You'll think about it. You do, you'll do the introduction. But yeah. referrals have to be specific, not like hey, you only wants to make money. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's like that. It's like saying, Joe, oh, hey, Steve, you know anybody who wants who needs a CRM? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and you'd be like, uh, not off the top of my head, because that's about as vague as you could possibly get. <laughs> yeah. But that is what well, people do. People, but I know 20 people, 20, you know, two different, three different, you know, CRMs. Yeah. And I've run into people that have done shotgun introductions, like 13 in a week. You get on and they're not framed. It's just some people think if I do an introduction, the universe changes. But if you do the wrong introduction, the universe goes negative on you. Mm. And I met a lady. She jumped on. She goes, I don't know how it's going to be. This guy's going to be. And nobody's been a fit. I said, well, let me learn about you. Well, I value to her. And I brought her two very big referrals. She goes, oh, my God, this call was worth it. And that's how you spin that. But don't yeah. ever do it without a framework. Yep. Yeah. And, and don't do the, yeah. I was going to say, don't do that classic LinkedIn one where you send a lovely connection request that's very personalized and all of that. And I'm like, oh, there's somebody who really wants to connect with me. And the minute I hit connect, it goes bing. And up comes the automa automated, hey, here's what I can do for you. I can sell you this. I can sell you that. I can sell you the other. And that's why, I mean, I wish almost like that, that LinkedIn thing wasn't called a network. It was just called a connections whatever and and you had another part where you could really tag real network you could create a real network somewhere else or whatever, another part of it but that's another one that's the two that's the disingenuous one like oh let me let me reach out to you pretending that i've i want to network with you but i don't really i just want to send you my pitch yeah i've got a guy doing it right now going back and forth and i don't have a sales team well, so let me help your sales team i mean it's, listen so here's another thing when you network that i tell everybody shut up Listen, and then when you're done listening, ask. You mm -hmm. either ask a question or ask for what you need. People are going to give you an answer, yes or no. No, they don't have anybody. But you're not selling them. You're building relationships. Here's what I'm looking for. Hey, John, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. to not to sell, not to pitch, but to connect. Mm -hmm. So shut up, listen, and then when you're done listening, ask a question or ask for help. Yeah. Where do you think, uh, what, what do you think are some of the overlooked uh, networking opportunities that are available today? Groups on Facebook, engaging with people on there, engaging with uh, high celebrities on LinkedIn. I'm engaging with Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, Barbara Corcoran, Damon, Damon uh, John, Dean Graziano, I'm using a product, but I'm engaging in their posts. Now, their team's looking at My hope to my goal is eventually go, hey, we've seen you multiple times. You know, how can we help you? I love Barbara on my podcast. I love Dave on my podcast. Right. That's my hope, whatever yours is. But engaging is very unique, very good. I call it a business cocktail party. Yeah. You know, oh, nice to meet you. John, I'm Steve Amar. Hey, what do you do? What do I do? You mentioned if it works, you exchange cards. And you build the relationship from there. Hey, let's jump on a call next week, whatever that journey looks like. 
that's all LinkedIn or Facebook. I don't love LinkedIn because it's business oriented. Um, but that's such a great way. When you're in a BNI and you're asked to do your elevator pitch, I learned this from one of my guests. She's on a top pitch women in the world. Build an image of what you do. Hey, audience, I'm a podcast host. I help people grow their network with high influential multimillionaires and billionaires who can make increase my network. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Mm -hmm. If so, let's connect on a one-on-one and I'll show you how. So I give you the image. If you want to do this, if you want to do this, if you want to do this. And if it's a no, they don't connect. But if it's a yes, they want to connect. Yeah. Building that image as you're connecting with people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to sell it. I didn't sell it all on there. But who I want to connect with. Yeah. And and just going back to the other part you talked about engaging, because again, I think this is a this is an area where you can either do it genuinely and authentically, or you can do it the way I see a lot of people do it, where they, you know, where they'll come on to maybe a post you had or a video or whatever, and they'll say, Great video, awesome video, or oh, learn so much from this. And you know darn well, you never looked at it, you never read it. You're just posting that because you want, you know, because you're using it because you think that's somehow that's going to start some engagement. If if you rather said something like, oh, I really like the point you made about such and such. Uh, and here is my opinion on that. Or here's some additional. Then I know that you have read it. You've engaged with the content. You thought about it. And that is and all you're doing at the most basic level is you're showing some respect to the person who put the effort to actually produce this video or blog post. These like great post. Oh, love it. Yeah, really interesting. That stuff is almost insulting. You know, it is. And when you do it the way you just said, where you're engaged in the post, like, hey, it was great. You said about your daughter going, you know, yeah. run the marathon and she finished. What is your story for this, this and this? Mm -hmm. What I found over the last six weeks doing this, it's funny you brought it up, I started doing it. I get people commenting on my engagement. What a great message, Steve. Oh, my God, you're really smart. Or whatever, I don't know. But that's the engagement you want where people are like, well, that's brilliant. He's just not putting a canned response. He's actually putting some thought into it. Yeah. No, and it makes such, it's such, it makes such a difference. And, and you know, something... If you do it, if you read the post, watch the video, whatever it is, you might actually learn something too. Here's, there's a novel experience or a novel thought. <laughs> Very novel. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, and then just, uh, just, just finally, uh, finally, Steve, uh, is there anything? Is there anything you would caution people against doing when they're networking? Is there, is there like one kind of cardinal sin that you see that if you just eradicated that, things would be different? Selling before selling, just thought of this some story. Selling before selling, selling yourself, not your product or service. How do you sell yourself? By oh, your thought expertise. Like, I've got a huge network. That's my expertise. Super connected, they call me. Well, I know I could jump on a call and somebody tested me last week. Here's what I do. I had two referrals for him. He's like, wow, you're right. I said, I built this massive network, and I'm the thought leader, and I use it. Here's the other thing. Give away your IP for free. I may have mentioned it earlier, but it's so big to me because people are going, he's so gracious. And I am when I do that. You are when you do it, John. I know you do that. That's what people want to work with, not with the person that's on LinkedIn going, ah, you know, you need more leads. Here's what I can do. Da, 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 da. <laughs> or the people who go, everything you're doing today sucks, but I can fix that for you. And you go, well, thanks for that. Thanks for that. And you, and you know that how exactly. <laughs> I'm going to response to the positive. I call Christmas gifts every day. Yeah. You know, the six-year-old, you ran to the tree, you open up, oh, my God, this great gift. Well, you know what happens at Christmas? I probably, as a six-year-old, gave my brother a gift or gave my mom. Uh. So we're exchanging gifts, these Christmas gifts. Yeah. If you have that mindset, your networking will grow like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, thanks, uh, Steve. It's been great insights. All of Steve's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. I am a podcast host. It's been ranked number one in small business marketing. I've been about 450 shows in the last year and a half, doing business with a servant's heart, with the whole goal of what we just talked about today, 
how do we build a servant's heart in business to grow and know it's a long-term thing, not a short-term thing. And I've got many stories of people that were down out. One guy was homeless three times and a billionaire four times. I mean, he's down and out, but went and served and learned and, and did all that. And TV show Together We Serve every Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. And that's just an extension of the podcast. How can we use together like me and you, John, are doing today to get the message out of serving before self? Yeah, and I would highly encourage you to go check out the podcast and all that Steve does. I've been on it myself. I can uh, I can vouch for how good it is. Uh, he has great guests, great content, and as you can see, a servant's heart. So I encourage you to go, go and uh, check it out. So listen, thanks again, Steve. Thank you all for watching, listening, and I will see you all again. Yeah.